And I try not to say anything terrible. Ah, uh, dude, like sometimes, you know when, when when you're doing live podcasts, you know sometimes things slip. You just roll with it. I yeah. I let loose with something about an ex girlfriend on a podcast and couldn't take it back. And you know that's why she's an ex girlfriend. She she listened to it and said, "Oh, now that's not good. You can't say that about me." Uh, All right, well, whatever. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I get I'm, I do a call in show, and unfortunately, I do the call in show because one of my trolls figured out my phone number. <laughs> you're like, hey, I know your phone number. I was like, you don't know my phone number. Like two one four six. I was like, this motherfucker knows my phone number. <laughs> so I decided just to get a new phone. I'm like, hey guys, call in if you want to. So I got to deal with like little white kids calling and saying the n word. Like I know you're not a racist. It'd be one thing if you were racist, but you're not. You're calling in because you think for some reason it does something to it. Are they just calling and like I won't have it on speakerphone? They'd be like n word n word. Was like it's just me, guy. What are you What are you getting done, dude? <laughs> You know, I guess, I guess it's their version of, you know, when I was a kid, you'd do the prank calls. There was no caller ID. No, but no. I have a very distinct voice, so I couldn't do it because everybody knew it was me. Even people that I was calling that I didn't think knew me said, hey, you're that Skoraka kid, aren't you? <laughs> like, so. Well, you said you said your name properly. This is Joe S, and we got to do the intro song. One second. This is Joe S. He is a comedian. Where do you hail from, Joe S.? South Jersey, southern New Jersey, uh, Cape May oh, County, to be exact. Below Atlantic City, an area that people don't even know exists. I would not have uh, guessed that at all. Your name, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound Italian or anything. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't sound like there's any South Jersey vibes coming off you at all, bro. No, I, just, I try not I try not to be a South Jersey, and you know, it's uh, there are a lot of embarrassing people in my area. Nah, no, nah, that happens in Texas as well, dude. We all we all uh say I'm sorry for our neighbors and friends, especially <laughs> in this day and age, dude. Like I said, I get confused all the time for like I I should be saying terrible things to everybody, man. But how long have you been a comedian, Mr. Joe S? I'm only saying Joe S because I have messed up this guy's name so many it, it's, so yeah, about. just Joe S is fine. You know, Skorok is how you pronounce it. Don't worry, Joe S is fine. Uh, there's only two of us in the room, and you're not Joe S, so, you know, they know you're referring to me, so that's cool. I've been doing stand-up since uh, December of last year. Uh, I had no training, no background. I literally woke up one day and said I was sick of dating all these crazy women and wanted to do something fun. And I said, well, let me do stand-up comedy. How hard could that be? And uh, I literally did an, my first open mic on December 14th, cold, never have been in front of a microphone before, never did drama in school, nothing. And uh, the place ended up being a biker bar. And my very first audience was a notorious New Jersey motorcycle club. So nice. and you didn't get your ass kicked out afterwards. You get some laughs. I got I got some laughs, but uh, they made me promise the next time I play the venue, I have to wear one of their uh, vests that said that I'm uh, Rocco's bitch, which I guess is better than road rash, right? <laughs> you know, so, um, but no, it was it was very interesting because I had no idea it was a biker bar. I wasn't familiar with the area. The, the, it was about 60, 70 miles north of where I'm from. I I just was looking for an open mic because the following night. A guy that owned a comedy club down where I live, Wildwood, New Jersey, he um, gave me five minutes. He said, look, you're, you're good. Uh, he, I sent him a tape. He said, yeah, come in. I'll give you five minutes on Friday, December 15th. But I said, I want to I get a practice running. I want to do an open mic, find out if I can even do this, if I'm going to freeze, if I can remember my stuff, whatever. Right. And uh, I did 20 minutes at the open mic, Dave, because nobody else was ready to go on. So I just did 20 minutes and, you know – Nobody was really paying attention. I mean, they were literally they were in there, but they were plotting their next crime in the corner. They weren't they weren't worried about what I was saying. And as so called young comedians, I feel like nobody really pays attention. And like I found like because I've set up a few interviews now since through our uh, I met Joe S on what was it Dis displaced comedians or something on yeah yeah yep yep yeah. And I set up a few interviews and I've watched a bunch of these guys doing interviews and it's like. Hey, where are you from? How's it going? Below? They're so damn boring. I don't want myself. I don't want. That's why I like the conversation that we're having right now. I like the way it's going back and forth. You throw some jokes in. You throw. You throw some info about you. I like. I like this. I like this better than like. So, Joe, how you been doing there, Joe? You've been. Uh, <laughs> that's stupid. That's stupid. So, so I've been doing. I just came from a doctor's appointment, and they told me that uh, everything's working fine. The plumbing's good. Uh, you know, the memory is not that great, but uh, you know that makes for good stand up because I'll tell the same joke three times and not realize it. Yeah, I had one of my because I, I I 
I did, did. I mean, that's that. You got to keep practicing the material. That's what half the like, people, people on my YouTube is like, I've heard this joke before. I was like, yeah, I keep saying it because I have to keep practicing. You think that this is where I want to end up at? This is on like my YouTube live doing stand up. No, I'd like to be able to go out one day. Like, I understand, like, I do have MS, so my walking isn't the best. And stand up comedy is kind of an oxymoron because this motherfucker's not standing up. And I'm not getting <laughs> up. Like, when I go and sit down, like, I got to go up there with a walker. So you're already fighting the battle uphill. It's like, okay, now let's laugh at me now. It's like, dang. So, it's, so. Like, you know, it's, uh, first of all, after doing this for almost 11 months, I respect anybody and everybody that goes up, even if they bomb, if, they, if they're if they not even funny, to have the guts to get up in front of a group of strange people and hope you can make them laugh is something that very few people will do and even fewer are good at. And I just happen, I don't, my stories are funny. People laugh at my stuff. I don't even know why. I'm just, and when, I, when I'm on stage, I'm basically you and I would be talking about, it. I'm not, you know, looking at an audience. One thing that I never do, and I do this on purpose, when I get on stage, I never address the audience. Of, hey, how's everybody doing? And I do now. If I'm hosting a show, that's a different story. Right. But if I'm just going up doing my set, I'll just go up and just start. You know, hey, this happened to me today, or did, did anybody ever have this? You know, and I just, I just go, and they love it because I think that they get that vibe right away. That it, they feel one on one that I'm talking to them. Even I find there, it, even you it's kind there. of redundant when you're like, hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Hey, let's give it up for this. Like everybody, like uh, I do find that kind of redundant. I do want to give props to everybody else, but I do it said, at the end. I do it at the end of my set. I thank everybody. I thank you. You know, I thank I thank the people for coming out. I thank everybody, you know, that, that brought me in, the promoters, the other comics, and all that stuff. But I don't do it in the beginning intentionally because because of like what you said i think a lot of people are like oh this is the third comment that said hey how's everybody we already said we suck we're, we're not happy we're, you know whatever they say so I, I intentionally don't do it but in the end i do i thank everybody for coming out i thank the 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 host or the promoter thank the club you know so i i do address it at the end but i don't start my set off that way well i think it's to me again who the hell am i i'm only doing this 11 months less than 11 months but to me that's weak when, when, when people come out and they start with that, and it's, to me, that's weak. It's like, get on with your stuff. It, uh, it reminds me of, if you ever saw that movie, that thing you do with uh, Tom Hanks about Ben, right? Okay. Have you ever seen that movie? Joe, let's have a whole podcast just about that movie now, Joe. God damn it. <laughs> well, when, 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 when they're <laughs> at the, the one theater in Pittsburgh, and, you know, it doesn't work. It's like, and the guy is there, is there, you know, come on, would you just play some music? There's a, that's what I think the audience says by the time the second or third comes out there. Hey, how's everybody doing? And I, well, you know, it's just, it, it's old. It, it, it gets old. It gets old fast. And I don't, I don't think a, uh, I don't think there's a reason to do it. As long as you acknowledge the crowd by the end of your set, thank them for coming out, doing all your thank yous at the end. I think that's the better place to do it. And it, it, you open up with your set. I want to open up with a laugh. I don't want to open up with a crowd saying, yeah, we're fine. You know, I want, I want to get out there and get 30 seconds, have my first laugh. That's a, that's a good idea. Do you mind? Um, uh, you mind if I take that? That that's it from you right there. Just, Listen, just, I, I just, hope. I wish. I wish every comic would do that. I really I'm do. I'm taking because... that from you. I'm just letting you know. I'm taking that. I'm going to the end. I'm saying thank yous at the end. I'm just going straight to. That's kind of what we did today. That's why I started it off. We talked for a second. I was like, hey, we forgot this. And because <laughs> I think you got to start out with some fun. People don't want to hear my. They don't get, especially on YouTube, dude. There's five million of me out there. The only thing that's going is there's not like. Well, not five million to me. There's five million YouTubers out there. The only thing I got going is I'm dumb and do stuff like this. And I try to do it a tad bit different. Well, it's, you know, listen, it, it's again, whatever you can do to, to differentiate yourself. It's a big listen. It's a big ocean with a lot of fish and you have to you have to be different. And, and you know, I look at, you know, I don't think I would have ever done this if I thought I was just going to be another guy telling the same old bullshit. Um, right. I just have lived a very interesting life and my stories are all true. I mean, I embellish to make them funnier. I condense them, you know, but you know, I, I give it, can I give you an example? Oh, real quick. Hold on. Before I give me the example, hold on one second. Cause I, I suck and I'm old and I'll forget this shit, but you sound, cause I was kind of the same way, conversationally funny and you are very good at talking to women. Yeah. All right. So I really feel like it, me being a comedian, like, there's, I don't care if there's, if nobody laughs at me at all, it's much worse when that one woman just feeds you back silence. Like you try to say something funny, you get nothing back. You're like, okay, that didn't work. Bye-bye. 
Like that's that's much worse than bombing on stage, at least to me. At least to me. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I've lost that thought like three times. And so, we go back so, here. Well, let me tell you about my crazy relationships. Right. I, did, I, I went out on a date with a girl, uh, had a great time, lunch date, set up a dinner date for the following week. And in the middle of the week, she sends me a Dear John text saying that she really can't uh, date me. She doesn't have time. She needs to rake her leaves. Now, you want to talk about an excuse? Have you ever been uh, dumped or had a date broken because a woman had to rake her leaves? I mean, there's a, I said, you know, tell me I'm ugly. Tell me I'm an asshole. Tell me what, but rake your leaves? Come on. That's so, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Beat. But yeah, yeah. So. That's hilarious. But, 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 you know, but, but it, it, I just let it roll. I, and I, like I said, I, I've, I, I've lived a life with all these, this interesting, I mean, I dated a girl. I mean, we're uncensored, right? I can say. Oh, you can say whatever you want to right now. We're recording and I don't, I don't really, I don't really edit for censoring like that. So I, I, I dated a girl who, uh, for no reason, there was no sexual situation involved. She just got up on her couch, pulled down her pants and started peeing on my head. Yeah. So yeah. this is the kind of stuff my life creates the material. My life, this is stuff that's happened to me. I'm more worried about the mess afterwards. The series, I don't care about the piece. Her house, her, her couch. I didn't care about oh, that. Her couch. Okay, then it's like I guess this is happening. Then it's your shit. Oh, That's yeah. what I said to people online, like, like, my house, I would have picked her up, picked her up midstream, thrown her over my shoulder, and thrown her out the front door. Her house, hey, I don't care. If people say to me on like when I do these vertical lives on YouTube, like what if can I whip it out and slap it on your phone? I was like, it's it's your fucking phone, bro. If you want to ruin your phone, <laughs> like you want to stick your dick on your phone, dude, go ahead. That is, <laughs> if you're watching me live and you want to slap your dick against your phone against your computer screen, that's on you, my guy. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. I'm still getting those watch hours, so let's. Could you drop me a dollar by chance while you do that? Just hit that little button. <laughs> Give me a super like because I made you want to like slap your dick across the screen. That'd be great, my man. <laughs> oh, so now you're charging for it. That's not ah, come on. That's we'll get that dollar another way. That's not a cool way to make a dollar. No, no, no. I'm a whore for money. I got a fucking uh let me hold a dollar. I got a change cup and everything. <laughs> this is I'm I'm the only honest YouTuber out there, man. They're like, oh, another bag on. Yeah, I got merch, I got books, I got all this stupid stuff. Or you can just send cash app a dollar, and I get that dollar. You spend a dollar. That's how it works. That's, that's brilliant. That's funny. I don't mind being a whore. I don't mind. All right. Uh, all right that's, listen, as, as long as you're cool with it, I'm cool. I don't care. I, I'm 63, non judgmental. Christ, I'm a, I'm a stand up comic for God's sake. Single makes life worse. Oh, oh yeah. You, say, you keep saying psychotic. Have you ever seen the meme dating after 35? You got three options you're either uh, a step parent. Uh, dating ugly women or dating psycho chicks, and psycho I, told, I, I I said that meme like I was uh, I was sitting at like a table with like three or four friends, and we were all like older. And I thought we were all with somebody, and like one girl was no, it's like ah, oh, that's not funny. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm are you are you psycho? Like what you just don't <laughs> like? Like are you just like because you're not you're just not like happy and beautiful? I guess you're not thinking like I, I mean I would I wouldn't classify you as ugly, but whatever. Whatever, but yeah, she didn't find that funny at all. But after thirty-five, when you're single, but you know, it's 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 true. I mean, from somebody that's been out in the dating scene, my wife passed away a little over ten years ago. I'm and sorry, to hear that. that's you know, it's a part of life. We were married thirty-one and a half years. It was great. I I talk about her in my show. I refer to her as my ex-wife because I found dead wife jokes don't go too well. So no, you know, <laughs> but um. But you know, I mean, I'm I'm with a woman now who's uh, who, who uh, can I tell you the story? We have time. Can I tell you the story? Yeah, tell the main story. That, 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 that that you know? We're actually early. We had, we were supposed to start at one o'clock, dude. We actually you were on here. I was like, oh, I got to set up. I'm ready. Whatever. Yeah, why not? We're all already early. early. That's 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 uh that's probably what you tell all your women. I'm too anyway. early. I'm sorry. That's what you tell all your women. I'm old and ready early. Yeah, yeah, listen, no. that's right. But but they, but they, but they like it. But the but the one I'm with now, we met online. I spoke to her for 20 minutes on the phone. First date was a lunch date. Had never met her before. Every other word out of her mouth was fuck. Tells me a story about how she told a telemarketer to eat her fucking pussy. Then proceeds me to tell to, to tell me she goes to church and doesn't like the fact that I use the word cock in one of my jokes. And, Lunch is over, no alcohol involved. We walk to the beach, have a nice conversation. Looks at me and she says, can you still fuck? 
Are you too? I, 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 you know, I, I never asked her what church she goes to, <laughs> but with that mouth, I don't know. It's a, All right. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to go. Now that sounds like a church I could sign on, you know, that's, let's do this. But, but that's the kind of crazies, uh, you know, I dealt with a girl that swore she was off heroin, ended up not being off heroin. That was a roller coaster ride. Te you know, it's um, addiction's terrible. And um, I felt so bad for this girl because I thought she was getting herself straight and I was trying to help her. And, and then one day it's like she just fell off a cliff and I felt bad. But I said, I can't be around this stuff. This is not this well, is bad I stuff. I hate to put rain on it, but they're supposed to be they're supposed to be single for a year after they decide to be sober. So unless I, should, I, I this is dude, we can start a support group of dudes that have been with psycho women, bro. Like for real, oh. bro, for real, we could do. We could literally start. Let's start a, a cross country support group. I, I, I'm 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 the president emeritus. You know, you'll have a you'll have uh, a, a painting of me in in the in the headquarters at some point because I think I've had I think I've I've run the gamut. I've run, I've run the guy. I mean, before I got married, I mean, I was 16. I dated this girl that was a twin. Right. She broke up with me. And, uh, you know, I'm 16. I don't know. I, I don't know the ways of the world. So I said, the worst, I'll just ask your sister out. She looks just like you. Twins don't like when you say something like that. No, probably not, man. No, I, learned, not. I learned the hard way. I did. I did. Initially said yes, but the mother stepped in and said no. He's, uh, yeah, that no. guy's bad, bad news. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. I did make, I did get with two sisters at one point and, but at separate times, like it was like maybe like six months apart or something like that. And it was all this bullshit drama. But the funny, they told me about like guys always ask us to get together. I was like, why? That's incest. I don't want to, I wouldn't want to, why would I want to be with you and your sister? That's gross. <laughs> I know it's to be cool to be with you and another chick, but you and your sister, that's, You've known her since she was a child. You're supposed to make out with her and do all these. No, that's uh, no, no, thank you. I'm not. I'm from Texas. I'm not from like West Virginia, guys. <laughs> that's but yeah, that that's a little, little too much. A little, a little bit much. too much. A little bit too much. Uh, and I, I also say like it worries me now. Any woman that's attracted me, uh, I, I, like I, I think you might be literally. And I, I don't know if it works the same for guys because I'm not. Unfortunately, I'm not homosexual, so I haven't tested it. But I think it is. If you're attracted to me, you're fucking nuts. I know that for sure. So you might want to, I mean, I'm not saying that I won't have sex with you, but you might want to get yourself checked out first just to make sure. I'm trying to save lives here, bro. So I'm, uh, I'll, I will let you have to save lives as well, Joe. Joe S. Joe Sacroa. So at the end of the show, you're going to get it right. You I, will swear get God, I, I swear to God, I won't. I'm just going to concede to Joe S. <laughs> just concede to Joe S. like all day long. Uh, how, how do you feel about when people tell you, like, hey, tell me a joke? Because I, I really hate uh, that. I, I, I'm a storyteller. I'm like, dude, I got stories. I feel like everything I do on this stupid live shit is my joke, man. So I, I, I tell them when, when you say you're talking about like people find out you're a comic and you're not on stage, right? That's what you're referring to. Yeah. yeah. I tell them, look, I, I don't mean to be an asshole, but you have to understand it's the person that's up on that stage telling these stories isn't me. It's it's a it's a character that I've created. I can't just turn that on. You know, if you're going to get, if you're going to pay me a couple of bucks and get me on a stage with a mic and some lights, I'll tell you all the stories, but I'm not going to sit here and just tell you it, it. You know, it's, it's just, it's the principle of the thing, right? Let it's me hold a dollar. Let me hold a dollar. See, you're coming to my side, Joe. Oh, let me hold a dollar. I will tell you a joke, bitch. I'm, I'm a comedy whore, but, but one of the, the one thing before you, before you went into the old man forgetting thing. And I said, I, I want to tell you like one of my true stories is yes, please. I I, I, uh, I I start out the story that, you know, when I was a little kid, my mother didn't think that I knew my name. So she bought me this shirt that said, hello, my name is Joseph John. And when I think back on that, she was serving me up to the pedophiles on a silver platter with that stupid shirt. And I wore the shirt to school. Now, that at that point, that's true. Now, the embellished part is I wore the shirt to school one day. I mean, I would never wear that fucking shirt. It was embarrassing at six years old. But... I said, I wore the shirt to school and then on my way home, this weird guy in a van was saying, hey, Joseph John, why don't you get in the van? I've got some candy. Hey, Joseph John, why don't you get in the van? I've got a puppy. And then I say, I don't know who he was talking to. My mother was right. I didn't know my fucking name. You know, so that, and then I have a call back to that, which is I talk about uh, going to Florida by myself to Fort Lauderdale. And I was getting sick of hanging around the pool. 
And so I did a little sightseeing and came across this little town called Wilton Manors. I asked everybody if they know Wilton Manors. Usually they, nobody knows it. It's, it truly is the second gayest town in America. So I said, you know, I was curious. I'm not gay, but I was curious. So I wanted to have a drink in a gay bar in Wilton Manors. So I'm sitting there minding my own business. And this guy comes up and he says, how much? How much what? How much hair do you have under that shirt? And I say, nobody's ever asked me that question before. I had no idea how to answer it. So then I lift my shirt and said, so I showed him. And then he starts petting my chest hair. And I figure I'll be his little Italian chia pet for a while. Maybe he'll buy me a drink. Again, I'm a whore, right? Um, and so I said, but not below the equator because I'm not gay. So he said, sweetie, if you ever want to switch teams, you give me a call. And uh, I want to be your coach. And then he gives me his number and starts walking away. And as he's walking away, he looks back at me and saying, when you were a little kid, did you wear a shirt that said, hello, my name is Joseph John? <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, and he really did have a puppy. <laughs> so, you know, it's it, I, 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 I kind of combined those two. Originally, they weren't. And I just kind of, so as you, like you were saying, you're always writing, you're always developing, you're always changing, you're writing, rewriting, scrapping stuff that doesn't work, maybe come back to it in six months and see how you can make it work. Maybe it'll never right. work and just, you just get it out. But I mean, that's something over the course of 11 months, I had those two jokes and they were as separate as they could possibly be. And now I brought them together with that, with that one final callback about, you know, and, and uh, I did it, I've only done that twice since I changed it up, both times got an unbelievable response. Honestly, we're about 20 years apart or so. You're 60 some, I'm 41. Um, when I was a kid, there was a literal video that they showed us which said, don't put your name on your shirt. And the kid had like his full name and broke it on his fucking shirt. Would you say that? That's all I could think about was like 20 years later, they let us know not to do this. Yeah, well, I was, I was a guinea pig. Yeah, I you were the, had the shirt that got accosted by the perverts and, uh, you know, was able to create that PSA for you to protect you. And you 20 as a years guy. later, we're saving life because my mommy put me on the chopping block. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is hilarious, bud, man. Like, for real, I remember there being an actual, like, don't ever wear any clothes with your name on it. And some like weird guys well, like, not, hey, not, Bobby, how's it going, Bobby? He's like, oh, what's up there? God, I'm like, <laughs> John over there getting fired. That's, that's, that's how, I mean, that that's what it was. You know, my mother wasn't thinking. And, and I have the shirt. I've got the shirt. I have never brought it up out on stage, but I'm thinking one time because I'm going to say, I know people don't believe this. Here's the shirt. And you can see it's battered, you know, it's, I gotta be close to 60 years old. Joseph John, I think we might be kindred spirits somehow. This <laughs> is a vest that I wore in the fourth grade. I was 300 pounds. Oh, about 300 pounds. This thing still kind of fits me, my man. Oh my gosh. So that just go. We, we might be kindred spirits. So you know what I'm saying? Just those titties get a little. If I could get these titties down, would <laughs> be good, bro. But damn it, Joe. So Johnny, fine. I think we just became best friends, bro. See that? We See that over and over. Man. <laughs> if you have that shirt, you should definitely be like. I don't want to lose it. I'm afraid somebody might steal it. Now in the day of making merch and shit, maybe you ought to make, make your own shirt. Like, hello, I am Joseph John. If found, return to such yeah. and such address. I, 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 I I thought about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on merch. I'm not quite there yet. You know, I think hopefully next year I'll, I'll be able to get some T-shirts and stickers and stuff and try to, you know, promote a little bit more on that that end. But, you know, I'm taking it uh, right now. Keenan, I'm having fun. I'm You're having fun, fun doing man. it. That's and, and, and why I'm doing it primarily. I'm doing it to have fun. I'm doing it to, um, you know, to, to show people, look, you know, don't don't ever live life with regret. I mean, if you, there's something you want to do, if you can still do it, do it. There's nothing bad that'll come out of it unless it's something crazy. But doing something like stand up or just taking a trip or doing go, you know trying skiing for the first whatever it is, don't don't put it off. Just do it. And that's what I did. I literally woke up last December and said. I want to do something fun. I'm sick of dating these women. They're crazy. They're all one's crazier than the next. I just want to do something fun that'll take my mind off of, you know, and like I said, I tell people, you know, just to try to take my 
mind off, you know, the loneliness and, you know, I won't say depression. I never ever felt depressed, but you know, you, you get to a point where you're 63, you had a great marriage, your wife passed away. You're dating these women. I mean, not that you're trying to compare them to your wife. You just get to a point where it's like, there's nothing even close. You know, I've got to find some other outlet and, and stand up was the outlet. That's a good outlet, man. And I mean, there just comes, I mean, and like, like I said, like people always told me I was funny. I was like, oh, but I'm, I think I'm more conversationally funny. I don't know how the guys do it on stand up. I, I tried to write stuff out, but it just doesn't. But then it's getting on stage and just talking. And like you said, saying, fuck it. Like sometimes you got to say, fuck it. And like this all happened for, I always, like I said, I always wanted to, but I was a chef. But then I got MS and I had to retire. And, you know, I, I can't just sit, I could sit at home and smoke weed all day. That <laughs> wouldn't be a problem. But, I, I want to do something. I hate not doing shit, man. I hate not. I mean, real quick, I did want to say, um, have you found out? Because I don't know, like, have you found out that there's been uh, about some like local pedophiles around you when you were a kid? <laughs> no, not, I, mean, I have, I mean, I have not, not one of them ever hit on me. And what does that fucking say about my ugly? Ass? Well, I I never wore the shirt, and. <laughs> I was too stupid to know. So for all I know, there might have been people that were, you know, but it's like, you know, oh, okay, this is a new game. Touch me here. Okay. You know, I, I was too stupid. I, I was, I was, uh, you know, but, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I wasn't ever really molested or caught. They told us to stay away. And if you don't, they tell that, that's it. My mom told me, like, stay away from them. Don't go down the corner. What the hell are you doing? Don't go down there. I'm sure I'm taking that for someone. That's not something in my act at all. Like, I'm sure I've heard that somewhere else before. There's, a, there's way too many premises. Have you found any issues with, you know, I'm, I'm sure, because I've, I'm not saying like joke theft or anything, but have you found any, any instances where like, oh man, I wish I had, I had that premise, but I didn't get out there first. No, no. Oh, wow. I mean, uh, you mean, uh, no, no, I, I think really everything that I talk about, because there's at least some truth in it, you know, unless people have had the similar experiences that I have, they really don't like there's one. It's a common thing. And I asked everybody, I said, you know, um, has anybody ever gotten a tit pick on their phone? And, uh, you know, some people say yes. And I said, well, if it was a girlfriend or somebody in a relationship with, yeah, yeah, it was my wife or my girlfriend. OK, I got a tit pick on my phone from a woman I wasn't even in a relationship with. She was a friend. She was in the hospital. She asked me to bring her a sandwich. I did that. Two days later, she sends me a tit pic. I text her, thank you. Why? She said, well, I just wanted to thank you for bringing me a sandwich. And I thought to myself, if I sent a dick pic to everybody that ever brought me food, <laughs> I'd probably still be in prison. So, you know, the tit pic thing I think people can relate to. I think people have gotten some perverted shit on their phone. So that's something that's maybe more relatable. But that really happened. I mean, I'm like, what the? And I, when I say a friend... She was really a friend of a friend. I didn't really know this lady that well, and she sent me this tit pic, and I'm like, "Holy shit, this is this is bizarre." Something better than nothing. I got a I got a dick pic joke that I got from this lady on TikTok. I have been caught sending a, a dick pic, but I, she uh, she caught her husband sending a dick pic that she took. So I was like, "I'm taking that. That's great. I'm using that. <laughs> like I'm, I'm using that. I'm letting you know right here, right now. You're gonna hear." I was like, "So I got caught sending a dick pic the other day." Um, unfortunately it was a dick pic that my wife took, but in my defense and to her credit, that motherfucker looked strong. Like, there, was <laughs> shadow, there was shadow. Like that shit was, that was like, if you, if I had access to the Mona Lisa, I'm not going to share that shit. Is that right? So that, that, I mean, and like you said, it is relatable. The one thing I was like, I, there's a local comedian in my area because I, I smoke weed and there's this stuff called dabs where you like, you have a, a, you put like this oil on this thing, you heat it up with a torch. Like, it seemed to me, it seemed like crack for potheads. I was like, but then I saw this guy. He's like, it's too druggy for me. I was like, damn it. He got it out there. Cause I've just been working on it and trying to make it something. I had right, figured right. it out perfectly. But then somebody on my live was like, oh, everybody says, I was like, okay, well, I feel better now that if maybe I heard that someplace else too. Maybe it wasn't just me. I do feel better about it. Cause I do hate it. I was like, oh, I was so close to getting it out there. You know, it's, and, and that, and that's the thing. I mean, I never talk about, I never talk about current events. I never talk about, because everybody talks about, I mean, you know, the uh, Epstein Island thing about the, you know, um, uh, the, the, the guy that the quadriplegic, what was his name? The, 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 the brilliant guy that died that was on, ended up on Epstein oh, Island. Uh, with Hawking, the, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, there you go. So, 
everybody had a joke. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you're, you're beating this to death. I would never get involved. I mean, it's just, you know, some of them were really funny. But, you know, you get to a point where people are going to get sick of that real fast. So I never do current events. So I don't do anything controversial that can get me canceled. Um, I do a lot of gay stuff, but it's not anti-gay stuff. It's funny gay stuff, right. um, like the like the Wilton Manners thing. I mean, that really happened. Um, and he did he wasn't the band guy with the Joseph John. I just added that at the end. But I mean, the, the, you know, stuff like that happened. Um, you know, there's something I talk about. Uh, you know, I did a show with a, a comic that was talking about that uh, he and his father bonded after he found his father's stash of porn and brought back a story that when I was nine years old, I found my dad's stash of porn. We didn't bond, but that's when I discovered my father was gay. And uh, I said something along the lines of Johnny does the catching is not a baseball movie or something like that. So, you know, do stuff like that. I don't think I, I've had a group of lesbians give me their endorsement. You know, that nobody's I don't I don't I certainly don't do anything intentionally to hurt anybody or offend anybody. But, you know, um, I, I just uh, I, I try to keep to the stories that that, ha that I know that I can I can I, I can say, yeah, this to a certain degree, is, is true. It really happens. Right, right. And you're allowed to embellish as a comic. Like, you're allowed to... That's what this game is. Like, especially if you... Sorry. If you do get any bigger and you have to, like, keep coming up with material, 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 like, it's going to take some embellishing. I'm almost positive that people that put out an hour every year don't have an hour worth of... Especially once they become famous, they have an hour worth of funny stuff that happens to them a year. You know, they hear stuff, they take stuff, they put it all together, and then it's their take on it that makes it funny. And right. I'm not saying anything is not joke theft, there's nothing like that. There might be a couple out there, and I hate even like I hate that I even have to like asterisk it by like what I'm saying because that's not that's not what it is. You know, there's there's a million stories in this in this city. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and 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 my my feeling is that listen, you know. Um, Somebody else could have some of my experiences and, and have some similar stories, but you know, I've got one. Uh, and this was a, this was a, a, a true story with some embellishment about. Um, I asked the audience, "Has anybody ever gotten a titty whipping?" And uh, you know, they usually say no. And I say, "No, no, I'm not talking about a little motorboat between the tits." You know, I'm talking about a full frontal facial attack by a pair of boxing glove titties. I go on to tell a story, which is this is all true. My family owned a diner in Wilder, New Jersey, and my mother had this habit of pissing off some of the employees. And one night she pissed off the head cook, which if he didn't show up the next day, I'd have to do my job and his job, and I didn't want to do that. So I tracked him down to a local strip club. He's in there getting a lap dance. I talked to him. He said, you know, I'll be back. Everything's good. So I'm getting ready to leave. The stripper gets up, starts walking towards me. I said, I'm not here for any of this. I just need to talk to this guy. He works for my family. She looks at me and said, I think you need a titty whipping. And, then, and these, the, like 3D, these big, massive tits are in my face and golf on my head. And, and, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, did, was that a titty whipping fan? I, I guess so. That was uh, somebody just called. Like, I don't know who that was. And I just <laughs> turned it off. Like, they can wait. Like, jeez. But, <laughs> uh, so up to that point, that's that's a true story. I mean, this woman basically demolished my head with her tits in a strip club. And uh, so then I say, and then the next thing I remember, I'm sitting in the ambulance with a concussion, and they were reading my injuries, a, a dislocated jaw, a broken nose, and they said if her tits were any bigger, I would have had two black eyes. So that part's the embellished part. But, you know, I, I, I how many people can say that they – literally walked into a strip club without any intentions of being there other than to talk to somebody to come back to work the next day and get a titty whipping. Right, dude. And that's what I mean. When somebody tells you, you need to, I, I think any red blooded man would be like, yeah, you're right. I do need a titty whipping. Well, like, you, you, said, you like, saw this woman yeah. and her body is not the one to be doing the titty whipping. Oh, really? Really? Uh, okay. she, should have been, uh, she should have been a dollar general. Taking cash. Day, wait, daytime at the strip club. Well, oh, this was this was like the reject strip club. This is where these women couldn't get you know jobs. 
bartending in other strip clubs. They were the strippers. That's how bad this place was. Now, now see, I'm I'm very awkward. I'm against being awkward. So at one time we went to the strip club and this old older age, like the oldest lady at the thing, she was this Asian lady. She kept coming up asking for a lab dance. And my friend pays her 20 bucks to leave. And she didn't <laughs> get it. She's like, well, I gotta do a lab dance for somebody. And she's just standing there. I was like, all right, I'll I'll, t- I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. We go over there, we sit down, and real talk, all she does. For that, for one whole entire song, she just on, on my on my stuff through the pants. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Like she was old, but she and she, I was like, can we get another one? And like literally, it was the only time ever that she. <laughs> uh, and I went back over. I was like, oh my god, bro! I was like, thank you, dude. He was like, for what? I was like, she was amazing, dude. I don't know, like she just <laughs> she did not dance at all. She just and I am not an Elishine at all, at all. I. Stain my pants. It's like I'm ready to go home, guys. I'm 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 done. I'm done. Peace I, out. Thanks. You know, it, it, experience is one thing. Just out and out, just not feeling it's another. So I think your experience was the woman. Hey, she was old, but she had experience. Good hands. This lady was just like I felt like I was in a boxing ring with a kangaroo. I also thought maybe it was a thank you. Like, you know, it was kind of, it was hurting my feelings when they would pay me $20 to leave, but you said, no, I'll go get a lap dance with you. So maybe it was like a thank you type of thing. I don't, I don't know. You, know, you got to show, got to show support, you know, you got to show support. Um, what do you have anything coming up? Uh, you, you post anywhere, you do anything? Yeah, I, I got, uh, you know, I, I, like you, I, I'm searching for young kids to help me with my online stuff because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So I lost the girl that was helping me with all my on- online uh, stuff. So I haven't really posted anything recently, but I do have, uh, you know, uh, Linktree, Joe Scaraca comedy, um, you know, and, and, you know, I've got Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and uh, Instagram on there. Uh, and there's, there, there, you know, it, it, if you want to see some clips, you go to my Instagram site. I've got probably 15, 20 clips of different shows I've done over the, le- the last 10, 11 months. And so it gives you an idea of, of what my material is, you know, how I present it, see if it's something you, you like. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm doing that circle thing on the map. You know, every every month I'm trying to get a little bit farther and farther out. Like I'm right. doing Connecticut next week. I'm, I'm doing a, a, a Mohegan Sun Casino. Um, next next uh, Thursday at Comics Road Strip, uh, yeah, Comics Road Co- Comics Roadhouse, and then Friday I'm in Poughkeepsie, New York, doing a show for a woman that loved my stuff so much she wanted to book me for three shows. I already had an engagement for the one date, so she's booking me for two shows in Poughkeepsie. Um, and uh, you know, um, this right. this Friday uh, coming up, I'll be in Asbury Park, New Jersey, I'm in a showcase for the Ugly Pancake Comedy Festival. And then um, Sunday, I'm like you, ugly pancake. You don't, you wouldn't fit in at all there, Joe. Joe, um, I, 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 that's a surprise for me, Dan. <laughs> Listen, I might be ugly French toast, you know, but they'll still find a way to fit me in. Ah, uh, we oui, we oui, have French toast. We we see, um, but, but yeah, but, but that, you know, I've got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I'm really focusing on 2025, so I'm probably, you know, I maybe have six, seven shows for December. And if I keep it at that, I'm happy because I really want to focus on putting together a, a good schedule for right. next year. And and I was offered a show uh, January 10th where I'm the headliner. So a little over a year doing stand-up, I've been hired as a headliner. Yeah. And it's in my, my hometown of Albany, New Jersey. After a year, man. Good job, Joe S. We could all aspire to be more like Joe. <laughs> well, you know, I work my I'm being sick. I'm being for real, dude. Like that is uh, that's very good to hear. No, man. I appreciate it. Work, yeah. man. And and you know, I, I don't know, you know, there's people out there say, Oh, you know, you, you're doing too much too fast, you're you're not paying your dues, you're not doing that. I said, first of all, I'm 63. And, you know, I have to, I don't have the luxury of time like the young guys have, number one. And number two, if I'm funny and I work my ass off, why the hell shouldn't I get these opportunities? The dues have been paid, bitch. Look at this face, bitch. <laughs> Look at this. These dues go, these, you, you, I was born into dues, motherfucker. Like, fuck that. Fuck whatever these young kids are saying. Like, and that's, and that's, I, I, let it, I let it roll. I let it roll. And I, 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 Look, I tell people, people say, I mean, I've had people come up to me and say, we've been trying to get in this venue for three years and you got in. How, how'd you get in? I said, look, 
I in business my whole life. I, I'm a mortgage broker. I'm a mortgage company. I went to school for accounting. I know how to network with people. I understand business. So I treat this as a business. So when I reach out, like, you know, when I we reached out, you know, we talked, I reach out, I see stuff on Facebook or other sites where people are playing shows. I find out who the producer is. I introduce myself, see if I could send them. I never send my stuff without asking. And, you know, they always say, yeah, send us your stuff. We'll take a look. And um, that's how I got the, the Poughkeepsie shows. I just, you know, reach out to the you and stuff. She said, Joe, you're, 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 you're hilarious. I love your, I love your material. Um, yeah. I want you for three shows. I said, I can only give me the dates and then the one I was already booked. So, you know, um, you know, it is, but she was happy to have oh, me for the two. And I was happy that we, she, she loved me so much. She wanted me for three dates. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it really helps me realize, okay, maybe I am uh, funny. And, and it was funny because that offer came right after a guy said, no, you, you don't fit our, our, uh, you know, what we're doing. And I said, okay, well, tell me what I'm doing to not fit so I can correct it. So maybe in six months or a year, I send you a new tape and, and you may want to book me. He says, no, it's not that. He says, you just don't have enough Instagram followers. I'm thinking to myself, so let me get this straight. I'm funny. I can make people laugh, but you want to basically poach my Instagram followers. That's, that's how I viewed it. It's like, that is, I felt so much better after he said no, after he told me that, because I'm thinking to myself, dude, you're, you're beyond petty and have no idea what you're doing. I, I look at it this way. I love the promoters that say, Hey, look, we'd love you to put some asses in the seats, but you're funny. You make people laugh and we want you on the show. And I appreciate that. And I promote the shit out of every show I'm on. I promote shows for, for people that are friends of mine that, you know, I, 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 I try to promote everything. I can't guarantee I'm going to put asses in the seats. You know, it's it just, it's, it's a random thing. Sometimes I'll have, you know, nobody there. Other times I'll have 20 people there. You know, but it's just there's no and I'm not the type of person that says, oh, you got to see me six, seven times, you know, because I need people there. I'm not going to do that to people. It's not right to do to friends and family. Well, there's this thing plausible. I don't know if you've ever been on there. It's yeah, I, I, I'm on there. I've never done anything there yet. Well, I, I signed up for like a show yesterday and it's like uh, hiding from the election. You know, and you're supposed it's like an open mic. But only like three people were there. Three people signed up, and they never. I was like, but that's what. Like, even if I'm talking to nobody, like I talked to nobody on my YouTube all day long. That's how I got this. That's how I got thirty three thousand followers. I just said stupid shit to nobody until somebody like, oh, that's a, so. That's that's what it's all about. And unfortunately, like living now that I moved to Denton from Dallas, I don't have access to you know comedy every every other day and and you know in downtown Dallas and stuff. I've got to figure out other ways. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, talking I, to nobody, talking to everybody, talking, you know, promoting yourself, promoting. That's the whole reason I started this stuff is because I wanted to promote people like me and meet people like you so we could be funny back and forth and hopefully, you know, do something. That's what all these young kids are doing. So fuck them, Joe. Yeah, listen, I agree. I, I, you know, we could play their game. We could probably play it a lot better because we're experienced, we're smarter, and uh, I think we're funnier. I mean, there's some young guys out there that are funny, but I'll tell you, there's some people that I just, you know, I, and, and I don't mean this, this, I don't say this disrespectfully or as, as a snotty person or whatever, but there's some people that I just refer to them as open mic comics. I mean, they're, they're, they're just not, they're not funny, um, but they want to try. And for that, I respect them because it still takes balls to get up on an open mic. But it's like, you know, you're at the fifth open mic and you're doing the same things and nobody's laughing. Did you ever think that it's not the audience, that it's maybe your material, that maybe you should take a step back? And, you know, these people have been doing this two, three years. I'm only doing it 11 months. So I feel funny trying to give them advice. But, you know, the fatherly nature in me comes out and it's like, you know, look, uh, if you want to do like a writing buddy thing and run some stuff by me. I'm happy to, you know, help you. And I, I did that a couple of times and people got like, you know, who the fuck are you? And well, I thought, okay, that's, <laughs> I'm not going to beg you to do, to, to help you. I mean, if you yeah, want my help, like, I'm happy. Me, to help. The, even as like, you know, even if, you know, you know, I mean, you might be better at writing jokes. You might write jokes for a, a couple of years or write, do that for a year. And then you might find your lane to get into stand up comedy and be better at it. You have to find, what you're good at, you know, it might not be, you might not be a road comic. And I'd actually, if, if I could be, I would, I would be okay with being a road comic. You're like, let's do it. I don't mind that. I don't need to be famous. I don't care about that. But you know, you got to find your lane and find what you're good at and find what your happiness is. 
And you I know, logistically, I you know, I don't want to jump. I see people jump, they're based in PA and they they go to Illinois or they go to Nebraska. Right. And I'm you know, the way I always learned it is from a touring standpoint, because I used to manage bands back in 15 years ago, is is you, you start with your home base and you just draw small circles and you just try to work yourself out from that that home base and 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 go out and make it logistically feasible um you don't just it's not a shotgun approach like oh i'm going to go from new jersey to michigan right it doesn't make any sense if i'm going to go to michigan okay let me get some Pe pennsylvania shows maybe an ohio show wisconsin show make My it all and bring forever. it back through new york you know do something like that make it logistically possible you know draw the map out and uh you know it, it's um it's something I'm – that's like I said, that's why I said 20, 2024 was just, hey, let me go out there and just do as much as I can to see if I'm, you know, getting better at this and, and, and getting better shows and better audiences, which I have been. And then right. 2025 is going to be the year where I'm going to do more of that road comic stuff. There you go, dude. And you sound – like I said, your clips were – I had to refresh myself this morning because I was like, I was like Joe's – Joe S. I was like, what? I, I know I watched his stuff and I like double checking. And as soon as it went on, I, he started doing your stuff. I was like, yeah, I remember this guy now. <laughs> I, I really responded with this guy. I understand that. Like, unfortunately, at 41 years old, I really re re responded. Well, listen, plus, you get, you, I'm sure you get inundated. You get inundated with, 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 emails and messages from comics wanting to get on the show. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough for you. Cause you want to, I'm sure you're the type of guy that wants to say yes to everybody, but you've got to keep the integrity of your show up and basically say, well, I think we've been over this job. I'm a whore. I have no integrity <laughs> at all. Dude. If I, asked, I asked them about their Instagram followers. I'm like, you were, Oh, like, let me, let me throw a charity thing to Joe over here. Cause you know, he doesn't have any Instagram going. No, I'm joking, <laughs> Joe. I'm joking with you, but I did want to say, dude, if you're ever interested in doing, something on plausible together or coming back on the podcast or doing our own podcast once a month, dude, I would love to chit chat with you. You're a very funny guy, dude. And, uh, you. you know, and, uh, you know, like I said, dude, and the guy that I met, dude, he does his stuff. He, like we were even talking, even though he lives in the same city as me, he can do remotely, dude. So, you know, I would, I would, guys always, he's all about that side hustle, dude. Side well, hustle, dude. Well, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll chat offline, put something I'll together sure. live right now. Dude, no, I'm fucking with you. Joe. <laughs> well, all right, we, we we wrapping up or? Uh, no, we can go. We can go. If you want to keep going, we can keep going. We can wrap. Yeah, it up. I'm, I'm good. I'm 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 good. I'm just you know, um, so uh, you know, people, you know, people always ask, you know, you know, why did you get into this? How did you get into this? How do you get the shows you get? And uh, you know, it's it's true. I woke up one morning in December last year. I, I say that people laugh. No, really. I said, no, that's really, I mean, I never, I never stood behind a microphone before. Now, I did some radio stuff for the mortgage business, but nothing live, you know, on a stage with an audience and, um, you know, never acted, never performed, never played an instrument, never, you know, and I literally just went cold, didn't take a course. Did, I didn't even know there were, I didn't know there were courses on how to do stand up comedy till after I was well into stand up comedy. So I figured, well, at this point, you know, I'm doing it. So I don't know that I need the course, but, um, but, uh, you know, and then, you know, the material, I just, I just, I draw off of life experience. It's everything that I talk about has some truth to it. Some of it's told exactly how it happened. Other stuff, you know, there's a lot of embellishment in it, but it starts, it starts at some point from, from the truth. And then, um, you know, like there's a, I did, I did a show in Philly a couple weeks ago and the venue had venues called strange loves in center city, Philadelphia. And the first floor had the stage restaurant and bar. It was nice. And the bathrooms were upstairs and they had like this all purpose room upstairs. So after my set, I ran upstairs to use the bathroom. I'm walking around. There's some people up there and there are three gorgeous women. I mean, better looking than any woman on the first floor. I go over. I want to say hi and flirt. And he says, Oh, um, you have to pay 10 dollars. What are you oh, that's the drag show. They were guys. The three best looking women in the place were guys. So I decided I'm going to put this set. Now that part is all, 
that happened. So right. then I said, you know, I could make this funny, I think. So I do this thing where I ask the audience, hey, do you ever have that moment where you have the impulsive side of your brain that wants to do stupid shit, fight with the part of your brain that's sensible and tries to talk you out of it? Said, well, at this moment, I tell I set up the thing like I did have a menu set up and run it. So I my impulsive side said, hey, you know, just go up and talk to them, say hi. It's not that bad. And then I I, I turn, I do it like a, a schizophrenic type of thing. And I said, Joseph, they're men. Well, you know, they're really pretty. I, you know, what harm could there be in, in talking to them? Joseph, they have dicks. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Joseph, they'll fuck the shit out of you till you can't walk anymore. And I said, okay, that's the one that convinced me not to approach them. You know, but, you know, it was just, it was just one of those things where, you know, you, you, something happens and then you just say, okay, um, you know, how can I, how can, can I develop this into a bit? So, uh, and see, that's, uh, we have, uh, not, not course, but in my twenties, dude, I worked in an aquarium store. I was a service manager and we were sitting there at the store and me and all my buddies, we see this beautiful pair of boobies through like this aquarium. We're like, holy shit, like the best pair of boobies ever. We are start creeping around the aisle coming through and it was connected to a dude. And I swear to God, if I was drinking, I would have woke up next to those boobies the next day. I swear, because they were beautiful. They were immaculate. I'm a booby guy. So they would have got me. Uh, you want to get take see if there's any questions from our five people watching us right let's, now? Yeah, let's take some questions. Let's see, because I know Lee Big from Australia said some shit. This see you next Tuesday can't shut the fuck up about nothing. <laughs> Hold on, let me get this set up properly real quick. So I can see everything. Because unfortunately, I'm blind as a bat. And they my, my followers know that though. So they expect one of my one of my slogans is players fuck up. <laughs> and I fuck up. So they might not know it because they're not actual players. I'm I'm an actual player. Okay. That that's that none of that is true. That's an actual joke. No, oh, that's an actual joke. You're not an actual yeah, player. That one's based in reality, like we've been talking about. Well, listen, you know. Texas players, I don't know how, how you guys roll. So uh, we roll in groups of white people. That's how we roll. Uh. In Texas. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Here, let's see. Here. We got uh, Lee Bick. Uh, let's see. What y'all been saying? Oh, we got uh, Lee Bick. He said, All he did was drop a dollar. All right. No, we can't. They're. The property dude, what are you properly dude? Yep, I'm okay. Dude, they're not murders on here. I'm y'all just talking to each other. Y'all have any questions to ask? So we got y'all been watching us for a minute, man. I'm not going back and reading all y'all stuff to each other, man. Which kind of hurts my I mean, I don't it doesn't hurt my feelings, but this isn't like it's all about me and Joe right now, guys. Yeah, and listen, you know, if they if they want to go and uh and, and check out my stuff on Instagram or Facebook. They could reach out and ask any questions. I'm listen. I uh, I I work on my my uh, social media every day. I think it's a it's it's a requirement to do what we're doing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And this is uh like, dude. I just I just fell in backwards to all this stuff on YouTube. Like I, I just a lot of practice. Saturday Night Live '90s got me the subscribers, and then uh, Vertical Lives over the summer got me monetized and stuff just because. That's Great. Yeah, I mean, it was all accidental. It had nothing to do with me, man. I'm very, very blessed and lucky. I did not, I did not try for any of this crap. But like you said before, dude, my uh, my rules are no politics, no religion, and uh, nothing that's going to get you punched in the face at a bar. So you know, like, so as long as you keep it funny and you you're good at all your stuff, it, I think that you're not going to end up with any issues. I uh, listen. I don't want to get punched in the face either. So I agree with you. That's 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 exactly how I roll with material. Is just you know, don't don't do anything that you're intentionally being offensive. I said, look, you know, there's people out there that come to comedy shows that are looking to be offended, so they'll find being offended out of anything you say, regardless of whether it's offensive or not. But I'm talking about you know intentionally going out and being you know targeting a, a person or a group yeah. or whatnot. And that's that's to me that's not comedy. That's just that's just hate hate bullshit. Well, in the end, we're all there to be funny or try to be funny. You know, I, you know, there's, you know, if there's, if there's funniness, like I would have, uh, I have, there's a, cause like, you know, if, if a good dude's really good with the ladies, you call him a lady killer. 
So when my son was born, I was like, why don't we call him OJ Simpson? Because he's going to be great. With <laughs> my, mom, my mom was like, that's not funny. That's not funny. I was like, that, there's, a, there's a joke in there somewhere. And so I've said it a couple of times to different people, like one on one. And you like, you can see their face. And then they start to laugh. I was like, there's some funny in there. I'm going to find that funny somehow. <laughs> like, I was like, maybe, maybe a tiny Ted Bundy. Maybe he's like, oh, lady killers. Like, why, why is it okay to call myself a lady killer? He's going to be good with the ladies, but not. Something like that. Yeah, listen. I mean, we we have to we have to relearn that there are people out there that are looking to make you laugh, and don't look to get offended. You know, just because you're having a bad day or you're just a bitch or whatever the case may be. I mean, you know, in comedy, I would say ninety nine point nine percent of the guys go out there just trying to make people laugh. They work hard. They have balls of steel because you know what? I don't care who you are. To get up in front of one person or a hundred or a thousand people, and you have no idea whether your stuff's going to land and you're going to get a laugh, and you go up and you do it like a trooper every time, you're, you know, there's nothing I could say bad about a person like that. This person has balls, has drive, you know, and you know, it's it it's just you know we're not we're not out there to offend people and hurt people, but you know. Um, but I, I, I have knock wood in about 60 plus shows that I've done. I've never been heckled. I've never, I've, you know, I have people talk back to me sometimes and I get right back to them, but I've never been heckled per se. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and I think that's pretty good given my newness where people look at, you know, they look, oh, this guy's new. He's raw meat. You know, let's beat the shit out of him. And I think they realize right away, oh, you know, maybe, maybe not. My, um, my first show, you know, it was like you do your five minutes. And then they do a three minute heckle. And one of my, I think one of my best jokes came out of that heckle is somebody's like, What the fuck happened to Fred Durst? It's like, I'm not Fred Durst. I just did it all for the nookie, my, my dude. <laughs> I did it all for the nookie. And so now I, I use that all the time on my YouTube live and stuff. And I, I give that guy credit. Like I recorded that first show and you can hear that guy. And I also like, I was getting up there and you, know, you can hear at the very end of, end of it, like, he's like, Look at those cankles. And nobody else heard it, but I'm like, I'm watching the recording. I was like, Holy shit, I got some cankles going on. I better get that check the fuck out. Thank you, bro. Like, I'm for real. Like, that heckle was helpful, dude. I took some water pills and got that shit taken care of. I'm not even joking. Like, that heckle was helpful. But, you know, it, but that's, you know, that, that that's where, you know, but I, I look at what we do, you know. Um, again, you know, very few people will do it, and, and very few people that do it do it well. And, um, you know, I, th I think people that come out to see comedy, whether they find the comedians funny or maybe even a little bit offensive, not overly offensive, I, I think that you have to give respect to the people because unless you're willing to get up on the stage, even for a minute, and try to make people laugh, I don't, I don't think you have any place whatsoever to be critical of of a comic. Right, right. I, I mean. And a lot of times, like, I went to go see a comedy show with a buddy, and he kept saying shit, and I was like, dude, shut up. You're not funny. They're funny. Why, why quit saying shit, bro? Just quit. Just shut up, man. Shut up. No, you know, that, it's, easy, it's easy to be hidden, you know, in the dark instead of being up on the stage and sitting in a, in a comfortable seat rather than standing up facing, the, you know, facing the firing squad. That's what I tell these assholes on YouTube that come and troll me. I was like, must be nice. You get to work with all this. All I get is your name and whatever dumbass shit you say. And for some reason, I'm still funnier than you, you fucking asshole. Yeah. I think it's because I was 300 pounds and I was bullied relentlessly when I was a kid. That's what made me a good talker. That's what made me funny. That's what made me that, like, dude, I was never that dude at the end of the bar that a woman came up and was like, oh, I'm totally going to fuck that guy tonight. Well, I had to go be funny in front of that woman. Oh, and I did want to say... You, you were very Jersey when you said, don't, even if you're a bitch, like whatever, whatever that was, your Jersey came out when you said bitch a few moments ago. Was like, <laughs> I was trying not to, that's why I like went over laughing because I was like, there's the Jersey in them. There's the Jersey now. <laughs> now. Even you're going to be a fucking bitch that day. <laughs> you know, right. listen, and I am terrible at accents, so I apologize to everybody from. No, somewhere. listen, it, it, I, you know, South Jersey is not like New York, we're more like a Philadelphia dialect. So ah, you know, when people okay. say you're, oh, you're from New Jersey. You're from, and I don't talk like that. I never did. We're South Jersey is not like New York or North Jersey. I got a subscriber named Lady Leo from Filth of Fucking Delphi. I hate this guy. He's one of my mods. I mean, he's okay, 
we're, we're friends, but all he does is talk shit about my cowgirls all day. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take that because we suck ass at the moment. We are the cowgirls at the moment. But and as, as I do, the only thing good from Philadelphia is y'all cheesesteaks, motherfucker. Even Rocky wasn't from there, bitch. Just fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, now the, the cheese steaks are good. The soft pretzels are good. The food, you know, let's let's go back to the food, you know. But but yeah, uh, I made a, a cheese steak live last night for the people on my YouTube channel. I do cooking shows about live once or twice a week, and I just do ghetto little, like I did a ghetto little cheese steak with like some roast beef and some provolone and some hot banana peppers. Nothing special. Nothing special. Listen, it's 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 good eats, man. Good eats. I uh, listen. I have trouble with my weight, but you know. Say, oh, you must drink a lot of beer. I said, I don't drink any beer. I eat, I eat, I eat pizza twice a week, hoagies. I'm not a, I'm not a clean eater. I, I think it's going to do my son's disservice because they're so fucking pretty. I really think I was like, it must be nice. Like, just like, do women just fall over in front of you? Like they're so taken by your beauty. It must be nice, but it's, you're not going to be able to talk. Like you're not going to, this is what made me a talker. Not look, looking like this. Because just minus the beard, I've looked like this forever, Joe. This is, <laughs> you're looking at 13 year old Keenan right now, six foot three, <laughs> 300 pounds. I just lost like 50, 60 pounds, dude. That's it, man. That's it. Like, this is. Well, congratulations. I'm trying to lose 20. And it's. Oh, uh, no. It's this tough. happened by accident. Don't congratulate shit, Joe. This happened by accident, dude. I was not trying to lose weight. Not at all. Like, I, I'm like you. I don't. I eat terrible. I don't try to do shit. Fuck that, man. It just happened. I could, I could be dying. We don't know, Joe, but we're going to accept it. And we're going to take it. We're going to do it. Well, Joe, I had a lot of fun with you today. I hope you have fun, Joe, and I hope you do come back and see us here at chat now. Uh -huh. We got to talk about some stuff, and, you know, we would love to uh, do more stuff with you in any capacity. Dude, you're absolutely hilarious, man. I hope everybody mm -hmm. finds you absolutely as funny as I do, and I do I do hope you get heckled someday, man. I think you'd be hilarious with a heckle because you're good at uh, good at conversations. Somebody would give you some shit like, oh, okay, really funny? I have a I have a comeback. It's, I've never had to use it, but if somebody heckles me, I would just I would just try to stop. It. You know, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, I was just as surprised to find out your mother had a dick as you were. So we'll talk about this later. No, you know, that's a good. No, when use I, when it. You, hopefully, you won't get heckled. But if you do, use it. I've never had to use it, but that's the one I'm going to use. Well, dude, like I said, I was a big kid. I remember being like like ten years old or eight years old or something. And I'm I'm sitting there crying, and my mom comes in. What's wrong with me? I'm like, they just keep making fun of me because I'm fat. And, you know, I had an uncle who was pretty damn funny, and that's where I get a lot of my funniness from. She said, well, your uncle always said, I may, I, I can lose weight, but you're going to be ugly forever. <laughs> I was like, holy crap. That is great. And I used that all the time when I was a kid. I was like, well, guess what? The only thing I regret is I didn't, like, when kids are like, what are you going to do, sit on me? Yeah, bitch, I'll sit on you. Can you deadlift 300 pounds, motherfucker? <laughs> I don't think so. How's that gonna be when I'm sitting on you and just slapping it in your fucking? I should have done it, dude. I'm I'm stupid. Well, like, oh, no, I'm not gonna sit on you. No, I'm not. I'm not fat. Dude. You you have this forum to say you're lucky. I didn't think of this when we were kids. All you assholes out there. Oh yeah, they are lucky. And I tell women that I meet from back in the days, like y'all lucky I didn't figure this out when I was in high school or junior high. Y'all would all hate me right now because I would have just mowed through these motherfuckers. But I hadn't <laughs> had it all figured out yet. I haven't figured it out yet. I was too worried about being made fun of. Oh, what are your friends going to say about you if you're with that girl? I'm getting laid. What are you but, doing? But, but, but did that did that help prepare you for comedy where now you just do it and you don't give a shit what people think, right? At this point, I mean, I really don't. I get up there, people say, oh, my God, aren't you nervous? Because the biggest crowd I ever performed in front of, I opened for Steve Trevino in uh, Pennsylvania back in April. And it was almost 900 people. And uh, – you know, they introduced me. I opened the show. People are cheering and clapping. I'm laughing my ass off. They don't know who the hell I am. They don't know. And I did my six minutes and and got up. People said, weren't you work? I said, nope. I said, I was walking out on that stage. I said, I'm going to know. I'm going to make those people laugh. And I did. And Trevino loved it. So it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Real quick, was that a worked out six minutes that you had written, like not written down, but something that you were working on and making sure that like something you had played with for a little while? Or was that just six it minutes? Was, it, was stuff that, it was stuff that I used and I had it, I had it written down. I, all my set, every show I do, uh, I, I type out my set list and you know, it's subject to change. You know, I'm, I'm pretty good at reading the audience and if I need to change something on the fly, I can do that. Um, you know, but you know, I've, I, I've talked to people about the pros and cons out there. I said, listen, be you. Just be you. Even if they're not digging it, be you. Do your stuff. Don't change for them. 
do your set. So, you know, for the most part, that's that's how I approach right. it. But if, if I see a crowd that just wouldn't be into a titty whipping joke, then I might take that out and throw something else. And it's not as um, adult oriented. Show this is a titty whipping type of crowd. I'm not going to throw the titty whipping joke. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that so much, dude. That is hilarious, man. That is hilarious. But yeah, I, I, I literally only write kind of so I can give my, I know my writing isn't how my, my set's going to be. Cause I don't write as funny as I talk. I don't think. And I just write so I can get my ideas out there and I have, like, oh, let me write this down. Let me do this. Let me work this out. And it's kind of like just a thing. And then when you're sitting there talking, at least for me, I don't know if it's the same for you. It kind of comes out differently. And like you said, you kind of you know how you're feeling that day or how it's coming yeah, across, yeah. Kind of, you know. So I like that. I like that, Joe. So all your links will be in the description. Thank you. I thank you. A link tree down there to where all these young kids can just click that little button. Yep. Just finger that little button for Joe. <laughs> just like you finger that like, share, subscribe for me. Finger that little button for Joe. Yeah, and uh, we're definitely going to invite him back. We'd love to talk to him again. Maybe in uh, maybe in six months, it'll be a maybe. This will be some fucking old guy we see on Netflix, dude. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, <laughs> well, I, listen, I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't hate you under my breath, Joe. And I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> nobody wanted to say anything to us, but again, we only had six people over there. And these guys from Australia might might be scared to say something to you because you're so big and so. Big. No, don't be saying. Don't be scared. Listen, you're you're anonymous. You're halfway around the world. Uh, you know, I get up four or five times a week and uh, talking to a microphone in front of in front of a bunch of strangers and try to make them laugh. That's you know, to me, it's well, not dude, scary, but most people think that it is. That's something. And I have people that come to my room like, "Oh, there's only 20 people in your YouTube." Room. I was like, "Yeah, dude." And over time. There's like a thousand people if I'm here for two hours. But have you ever talked to 20 people at once? Because really and truly, the most crowd I've talked to is like maybe 10. And that was all comics at an open mic, dude. So 20 people sitting there staring at me just waiting for me to say something is kind of what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah, it's it's it you know, but uh, but we do it. You know what? And, and we should be uh, proud mm -hmm. of ourselves that we do it because there's a lot of people that can't do it, won't do it. Uh, and if you do it well, that's even a feather in the cap. Well, let's give Joe his, and I hate the word flowers. Let's give Joe his props. He's out there doing it no matter how old he gets, dude. He yeah. doesn't care. He doesn't I have care. an ARP card. <laughs> Work hard, try hard. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you on a few. I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to talk to Joe. Fuck you guys. All right.